Yes, and we're going to be rounding up the session on the singles and, and future marriages tonight. Um, one of the stories that I want to share with us is one that I shared at the Luton meeting very, very quickly. The story is the story of Abishag in 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. I'll go through the story very, very quickly. King David was, um, he had grown old and they were looking for somebody to keep him warm. And the, an advert was put out that they were looking for somebody who was going to be a, 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 a queen. And this lady, Abishag, I want to believe she must have been a very, very beautiful lady. She signified interest and eventually she was selected to become the lady that would come into the palace as, as the queen. As a queen to old King David. We all read that story, and as I shared it at Luton, it was amazing that Abishag did not know the job description. She was not aware what she was going to be doing. But she was all she knew was that she was going to be married and she was going to be going to the palace. And she was going to be given a lot of privileges. And this story is one that we see in the lives of so many of our single sisters these days. We're going to be praying tonight. Abishag did not have the full information about her role. She did not have the full information about the about the, the kind of position she was going to be in the palace. I did explain to the sisters, I said, if there's anything you should notice, Abishag was married. She was taken off the singles market. Everybody saw her as a married woman. But the Bible says that King David never had sexual intercourse with that lady. But of course, if King David did not sleep with her, she was never going to give birth to a, a king. She was never going to give birth to a, a, a king to be. And it's such a sad case because, unfortunately, she's missus. But then she never really achieved the purpose of that married life, so to speak. Even the consummation of the marriage never took place. We're going to be praying tonight. And one of the prayer points we're going to be asking and we're going to be placing before the Lord is that the Lord will help us. Single sisters, this is what I want you to pray tonight. That the Lord will help you that every offer that will take you away from God's purpose and God's plan for your life, it will not come your way. Every fake success, because you know, Abishag was labeled missus. She was taken off the market. No brother could approach her. No brother could come to her anymore. But unfortunately, that was as far as it was going to be. You're going to pray tonight and say, Lord, I am asking in the name of Jesus that you will help me. Every offer that will take me away from you, Every offer that is a, is a failure, that is, that is, that is being covered, is, is being camouflaged as success. Father, in the name of Jesus, I remove from my path every brother that will marry me and I, there will be no difference between me and somebody who is still waiting for marriage. Father, I remove them from my path in life in the mighty name of Jesus. Mothers, I want you to pray tonight and decree before the altar of God and say every man that will marry your daughter and she would wish and she would She'll be putting her finger in her mouth and say, I, I would have been better off as a single lady. In the name of Jesus, we remove such from your path in life. In the mighty name of Jesus, every man that will marry my, my, my daughter and will put my daughter in a place of regret, where she'll be saying that she's, she's, she would have been better off as a single lady. Father, I remove them from the path of my daughter in life. In the mighty name of Jesus, every girl that my son will approach, that it will make him to wish that he had never Never married in the name of Jesus, Father. I remove such girl from his path in the mighty name of Jesus. Every failure that is camouflaged as success in marriage, in the name of Jesus, I remove from their path in the mighty name of Jesus, Father Lord God Almighty. Every access to such offers, I block in the mighty name of Jesus. I block every access to such offers, every offer that will end up being a regret in marriage, Father. For my son and for my daughter, in the mighty name of Jesus, I cancel from tonight. I I decree that they shall not stand in the mighty name of Jesus. They shall not stand in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I was trying to share with the sisters at the meeting. You see, the truth is that Abishag had a mother. We never saw the, we never heard the name of Abishag's mom. We never heard the story how it happened. But I'm sure Abishag had a mother. The mother must have been excited. You know, she got, she got the, what do they call it now? The outfit. Oh, mother, mother of the day, bride's mom. And you, she had her head get tied. There are mothers who do that every Saturday. You release your children into destinies that they will forever wish that they never stepped into. Tonight you are going to pray and say, Lord, if you remain 
means one day for me to release my children onto such a destiny, Father, supernaturally, I give you power to cancel such appointment. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, Lord God Almighty, open my eyes that I will not let my children, that I will not lead them, O Lord God Almighty, into a marital life that they will regret for the rest of their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, Abisha got married without knowing the full implication of the home that she was going into. She was going to be there within the palace, but she would never be addressed as a queen. She would never give birth to a king. She would never give birth to another queen. She was just going to warm the bed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare tonight. Father, even if it remains a few hours for my daughter to walk into such a marriage, Father, where she will never find fulfillment, where that which is called marriage will not be her portion. Father, I remove her from such. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, whether it remains a minute or an hour for my son to walk into such a marriage where she will, he will regret for the rest of his life. Father, supernaturally, I cancel such marriages. In the name of Jesus, I decree that they shall not stand. I decree that they shall not hold. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. My dear sisters, some marriages are sure of. I can tell you, the marriage ceremony, the wedding ceremony is flamboyant. People had takeaways. In fact, they had iPads for takeaway. The woman gets married. The person who will help her do the cooking is there. The person who will help her wash clothes is there. She was not going to do anything. She was just going to be pampered and go on holidays abroad and have her nails made. But you know the amazing thing. she is. It is just a show off. Meanwhile, some people enter into marriages. From the very first day, you are making profit. You are making gain. Emotionally, you are, you are flourishing. That is what is called a marriage. You are going to pray tonight in the name of Jesus every husband every wife who would take the glory of my children and replace it with reproach in the name of Jesus I send you far away from my children in the name of Jesus every man who will replace the glory of my children and put reproach in his place in the mighty name of Jesus from tonight I say I cancel such encounter that will lead to such marriage in the mighty name of Jesus I release my children only into marriages that will be profiting that will be fulfilling in the mighty name of Jesus I say I decree my daughter I decree regarding you Every husband who will take away your glory and replace it with reproach. In the mighty name of Jesus, supernaturally, I remove you from their contact, from their hold. In the mighty name of Jesus, and I decree tonight, every interest that will end in a disgraceful ending. In the name of Jesus, from tonight, I cancel. I cancel and I reject and I refuse on your behalf. In the mighty name of Jesus, hey, every contact, every interest that will have a limit impact on your life my daughter and my son in the name of Jesus tonight I reject on your behalf in Jesus name we have prayed I was sharing with my sisters a few days ago do you know there are people you look at them from the beginning of their life you know that this person is going places maybe you have a daughter when she opens her mouth to sing she sings marvelously then suddenly she marries and then the husband says, what's all this nonsense? Is it only you? And that girl, that woman is grounded for life. You're going to pray. Every man, every woman who will marry my children and will limit them in life. In the name of Jesus, I decree that that marriage shall not hold. I decree that that encounter shall not take place. There shall be no exchange of vows between you, my children, and any such individual. My children, you will achieve the maximum purpose that God has, has given you. There are marriages that hold. And the man will stir the woman. And the woman will encourage the man to be the best that God wants them to be. This is the kind of marriage we're asking for. Single sisters, I'm asking you to pray tonight. Every man who will marry you, every man who will turn their mouth towards you and will limit you and hinder you from the plan of God for your life. In the name of Jesus, we cancel such encounters. We decree they shall not stand. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree they shall not hold. Every experience that will be limited, every experience that will hinder you from getting to the point that God wants for you. In the name of Jesus, tonight I cancel them and I frustrate such tokens in Jesus name we have prayed I was told in the story of Samson 
Do you know, when we talk about Samson, everybody talks about Samson and Delilah. All that you remember is Delilah. Delilah did this. Delilah did that. Delilah brought Samson to an abrupt end. And I keep asking, for goodness sake, Delilah was not the first woman to come into Samson's life. Why are we attacking that woman? That woman achieved her purpose in life. Have you ever thought about it? She actually accomplished what she was supposed to do. Everybody, the name of Delilah is still on our tongue till today. Why? Because she did that which she set out to do. Reading through the story, Judges chapter 13. I read through verse 12 to 14 this evening. I was sharing it with my husband. The Bible says, so... Manoah asked him, talking about when the angel of the Lord appeared, came back to speak to Mrs. Manoah. Because Mr. Manoah had requested and said, whoever spoke to you, I need them to come back. The angel of the Lord came back and Manoah was there. And Manoah asked the angel, Manoah asked, when your words are fulfilled, what is to be the rule that governs the boy's life and work? If you remember, Mrs. Manoah had been barren. And then suddenly an angel appeared to her. And the angel says that, hey woman, I know that you've been barren, but very soon you're going to have a child. The, the Bible says that the angel told Mrs. Manoah, you are going to conceive. A woman who has been trusting God for the fruits of the womb. Suddenly, in the middle of the day, you are doing your dishes. Somebody appeared my, you know, in your kitchen and says, Hello, Jumoke. Hello, Titilola. Hello, Taiwo. Hello, Blessing. You are going to have a baby. What's the first thing you are going to do? Wow, this is an experience. And the next thing you do is, if you have a pen, if you have your iPad, you start to write. So that you do not forget what that angel is telling you. The Bible says that the angel told Mrs. Manoa. The angel gave this woman the instruction. A husband says, I need to know who spoke to you. Ask that the angel will come. The angel came back. And the, Mr. Manoa said to the angel, how do we know? What do we do with this man? What do we do with this child? How do we raise him? How do we confirm your word? The angel answered Mr. Manoa in a very simple answer. The angel said, your wife must do all that I have told her. Kai. That means the manual, the information about the success of Samson in his life was handed over to his mom. It was handed over to the mom. But you know what happened? You know what happened? That woman did not keep her part of the contract. She had forgotten the instruction that was given. She fed the baby. She carried the baby. But after that, she forgot all about it. And another woman who was conscientious with her own, with her own task took up the life of Samson and destroyed it. Samson made a mistake. The Bible says that Samson would not listen to instruction. Samson would not listen to instruction. The Bible says he could not be corrected. When it was time for Samson to marry, he chose a group of people to go and pick his wife from. All sorts of things happened. Samson's wife ended up being given to somebody else. And Samson got angry. He could not manage his anger. He went and he started killing and all sorts of things happened. And because of this problem started for Samson's life. Why? Because his mother could not pay attention to instruction. Every time I read that story, my heart bleeds for Samson. My heart bleeds for Mrs. Manoa. You know what happened? I was asking my sisters, what happened to Mrs. Manoa? Did she ever have another child? What happened to her in her old age? It will be recorded in her history that she had a child. But that child was not there to outlive her. We're going to pray tonight and we're going to ask. Your job is to wait until your joy is complete. You're going to pray right now and you're going to say, Lord, I am asking wherever I need to instruct my children so that they'll be ready for the choice of who to marry. Father, I receive wisdom and instruction in the mighty name of Jesus. Single sisters, you're going to pray tonight. You're going to ask that the Lord will help you. Every lesson you need to learn before the time of marriage comes, that the Lord will equip you. He will expose you. In the name of Jesus, he will expose you so that you will not go into that field unprepared. You will not go there ignorantly. You will not choose ignorantly. The Lord will direct your heart. He will instruct your heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, my prayer tonight is that you will help me, Lord, that I will instruct my children, that I will teach my children. I will help my children. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will not lead, lead them in a wrong way to go. Father, I will equip them with the information that is needed. Father, that they will not make a wrong choice. They will not make a wrong deduction. They will not make a wrong assumption. Even in the choice of who to marry in the name of Jesus, my children will have the right 
information from me. They will have the right support from me. In the mighty name of Jesus, the instruction that the Lord has given me regarding their future home, I will not leave it aside. I will not focus on other things that are irrelevant. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Do you know what happened to Samson? Samson lost confidence in himself because of what happened with that first woman he married. He lost confidence. He just gave it up. And I'm sure, you see, I have seen this a few times in my life. When a man says, I'd rather be dead than to live in a house with this woman. Or a woman says, I'd rather be dead. Let them call me any name. I don't want to live in this kind of relationship. And they now, they don't marry. They don't go back and find somebody to marry. They now start going from one woman to the other. From one woman to the other. A boy that you believe that you have trained to honor the Lord. He now becomes a womanizer. A man who is going around from one woman to the other, he's looking for something. There is something missing. A woman who cannot keep herself, there is something missing. It doesn't matter what. They say, oh, it's because he's not taking care of me, because he's not giving me money. No, you're looking for something. We're going to pray tonight and we're going to say, every man, every woman who will marry my children and will not allow them to experience the joy, the fulfillment of marriage. In the name of Jesus, Father, from tonight, I cancel such appointment. I said, they will not come near my daughter. They will not come near my son. In the name of Jesus, we've got 10 seconds to pray that prayer point. We've got quite a lot to cover tonight. In the name of Jesus, Father, my Libra and Telira Basata, Metropolu, Umpir Esketeye, Mintu Pro, Untolige de Eskitaya, Renimbra and Deli Eprodoso to your Umbra de Ashkitaya. In the name of Jesus, every man, every woman who will come near my children, who will come in the way of my children in marriage, I will stop them from being fulfilled and will make them to lose confidence in themselves. I will make them to lose confidence in you, God. In the name of Jesus, I cancel such appointments. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Do you know another story that I came across? And it was quite um, it was quite funny to read that story. It's the story of Abigail. All of us, when we talk about Abigail, we talk about Nabal. We speak about Abigail marrying a stupid man. And, you know, you keep wondering, what happened there? The Bible says that Abigail was a very, she was a very wise woman. She was beautiful to look at. But she got married to a fool. Another question I ask you, who is Abigail's mother? The Bible says that Nabal was a rich man. He was a rich fool. You can imagine, we do it on a daily basis, sisters. We make a choice. We look at what is visible. Abigail's mom must have done that. There was a rich man in town who was not married. So because of that, you marry him. There was a rich man, but he was an extremely foolish man. But you gave your daughter out to him in marriage. Some mothers still, still do it these days. And they say, oh, the man is abroad. Hey, choose him now. At least you know that you can go abroad. Some tell you, no, I want to have cast for a child, for a grandchild. Because of that, you commit your children to, to a future of, of tears and sorrow. That was what Abigail's mom did. But thank God, thank God, thank God for his salvation. Do you know what? We're going to pray and we're going to ask the Lord, Father, my vision is limited. Help my children and help me to see with your eyes when it comes to choosing. Not every rich man will take care of you. Not every rich man is a godly man. Not everybody speaking in tongues in church knows God. We're going to pray tonight and we're going to ask Lord, open my eyes, open the eyes of my children. Cause us to see clearly when it comes to the time of choosing. In the name of Jesus, it may be nice, it may be soft-spoken, it may be opening the door of the car, but once you're married, the first thing they meet you with is a slap on the face. Say, Lord, open my eyes that I will see these individuals for exactly who they are, that I will not be deceived. My children will not be deceived. My daughter will not be deceived by wealth. My daughter will not be deceived by speaking in tongues. He will, she will see clearly. My son will see clearly regarding the choice of who to marry. Single sisters, pray that the Lord will help you to see. Be, be, you will see beyond that soft spoken brother that is never angry with anybody but there is there is rage residing on the inside of him in the name of Jesus father expose them before my eyes cause me to see your law cause me to see your law cause me to see your law father show me signs that, that I cannot ignore in the name of Jesus regarding my children and the choice of my in marriage in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we have prayed my dear sisters, no matter how you try, there are wolves in sheep's clothing. 
They are everywhere in the past. We used to say, don't marry unbeliever. Now I say, even the believer, you need to be able to see. Because if you're blind, oh my God, oh my God, it will be unbelievable. I want you to pray and ask God and say, Lord, every wolf in sheep's clothing that has positioned themselves in the path of my children in marriage, Father, forcefully I remove them tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Every wolf in sheep's clothing, Father, I remove them from the path of my children in life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say every deceiver, every deceiver, every deceiver, Father, I remove from the path of my children's marriage in life. In the name of Jesus, Mamplodo Sotoli Hekaya, Jelebro in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. My dear sisters, those of you who are married, you know, that there are some husbands, they have postgraduate degree in making stupid decisions. They have postgraduate degree in making foolish decisions and it is repetitive and they never learn from it. When you ask them what has gone wrong, they point fingers at everybody else but themselves. You're going to pray tonight and say, Lord, every foolish man, every foolish woman whose choices will cause repetitive suffering and heartache for my children, Father, I remove them from my children's path. In the name of Jesus, every man, every woman who will make stupid and foolish decisions on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, that will cause my children sorrow, that will cause my children heartbreak, that will cause my children heartache. In the name of Jesus, I remove them. I remove them. I remove them from the path of my children. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I don't want to, at the age of 75, be praying for you to please mend, for you to please sort it out. Father, from tonight, I'm making a declaration in case, Lord, Father, such person has aligned themselves along the path of my children in life. Father, supernaturally, I wipe them out of that path in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. There is a grace to watch and pray. There is a grace to watch and pray. A lady shared something with me a few months ago. She said, Omobi, I cannot keep still. I have no peace regarding the choice of who my daughter has chosen to marry. Wow, that is a mother. That mother is standing in the place of prayer. And I tell you, if that individual was not God's plan for that girl, there is no how she can do it. That marriage cannot hold. That is what it means to stand in the place of prayer. You're going to pray for yourself tonight, mothers. You're going to receive the grace to watch and pray. The grace to watch and pray concerning your children as they make their choice towards who to marry. You're going to pray that the Lord will open your eyes as the boy walks in through the door. Your spirit inside of you will give you witness to say, no, this is not the one. And when the right one comes, the spirit inside you will bear you witness that this is home and this is peace coming your way. In the name of Jesus, it will not be that when the boy comes and he has been taking your daughter out, you will then start to fast and pray. That is starting a bit too late. Say, Father, from now open my eyes. Give me an idea. Give me insight. Give me a name. Give me a location. Give me a town. Give me a description. I need information regarding who my children will marry. Father, open my eyes to see. Father, give me clear picture in the name of Jesus that I will have a clear reference. When the time comes, there will be no confusion. It will be clear and it will be obvious. In the name of Jesus, Father, I receive for myself insight, insight, insight that I will know, that I will see when the person will come who you have planned and propose for my children that I will be very clear there will be no confusion in the name of Jesus there will be no shadowing in the name of Jesus it will be clear it will be precise location name title occupation Father Lord God Almighty something that I can understand something that will be clear to me something that will be easy for me to verify Father I receive Lord Rema Libra Hanta Shatayaha Rema libro honto lige buska taya handeli haske. Rema libro honto lige buska taya haske. In Jesus' name we have prayed. The Bible says that the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? I've shared this with you before, sisters. A few years ago, in the early days of thy precious jewels, those who joined us in the early days of this mom's altar, you will remember the story. 
a jewel just contacted me and said, look, Omobi, I'm not very well. I've been bleeding. I've been bleeding nonstop now for a few months. And I started to make inquiries. How did you, what happened? Initially, I thought it was a medical problem. But then when the Lord started to put something in my heart that, no, 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 no. This has got nothing to do with excessive bleeding. It's got nothing to do with fibroid. I called my husband. I said, my husband, please help me on this matter. And I spoke to the lady. I said, look, I need to discuss your case with my husband. I said, because this is not clear at all. It took us how many, how long to speak to this lady. And you know what the Lord showed us? <laughs> the Lord showed us that there was an evil inside our household. There was an evil inside our household that was responsible for that problem. What did she do? We instructed her to fast and pray. A woman who was already bleeding. A woman who had been bleeding for days, she was already getting tired and weak. In fact, sincerely, my heart fainted when my husband said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to fast and pray. This woman fasted. She was getting more tired and more tired. And on the day before she finished the last fast, in the middle of the night, she woke up. And something prompted her to get up. She got out of bed and walked quietly because her husband was not by her side. There in their bathroom, nakedness of human being, her husband was standing with a calabash in his hands with sanitary parts from this woman. Only God knew what he was doing with them and he was making incantation. This was a man that married her in a church in Lagos. He was a born, well, he was a born again tongue speaking brother in the church. She went back to her bed and she finished the fasting and praying. By the time she woke up in the morning, he was gone. No trace of him. No trace of him. She got up, got dressed, went to the in-laws and said, I'm so sorry, I've not seen my husband for a few days. They told her, we know where our son is. It wasn't until later the truth came out. This guy was not even a Christian at all. He was looking for a candidate. He was looking for a candidate. As the woman was bleeding, he was taking the virtue. He was touching the sanitary part. He was taking the virtue and touching the sanitary part. The Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. You're going to pray tonight. And you're going to say, Lord, every wicked man, every wicked woman who will make an attempt, who will make a move towards my children. Father, Lord God Almighty, with the thunder of heaven, I put a separation between them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say such shall not hold. I decree such shall not hold. Every man, every woman who will come towards my children with the purpose of destroying them, with the purpose of wasting them. Single sisters, pray. Every man that will approach me with the intention of destroying my life, with the, with the outcome of destroying my future. In the name of Jesus, from tonight, uh, Father, spiritually, I put a barricade that cannot be broken. I put a barricade that cannot be overcome. In the name of Jesus, I say, Lord, no. I say no to such an affair. I say no to such a conversation. I say no to such an engagement. I say no to such a marriage. In the name of Jesus, I say every wicked man, every wicked woman who will destroy my children, who will cut them out before their time. In the name of Jesus, I come against you. I come against your desire. I come against your plan and intention. In Jesus' name we have prayed. The Bible says that no man receives anything except he be given from above. We're going to pray tonight. Single sisters, every man, every husband that has not been given from above, you will not receive. <laughs> you will not receive and you will not be in a hurry to receive. So you're going to pray that prayer. Say, Lord, I am releasing myself to you, single sister. Say, I am releasing myself to you tonight. Every husband that has not been given to me from God, in the name of Jesus, I reject. But adventure, I'm in a relationship with them tonight. In the name of Jesus, I cancel that relationship. I say, Lord God Almighty, the love and the affection of such be removed from my heart. In the name of Jesus. Mothers, I need you to pray. Every man, every woman that is not given from above, that will not be given from God himself. Father, I reject for my children. In the mighty name of Jesus, every marriage relationship, every marriage partner that is not authorized by heaven, that is not approved of God, in the name of Jesus, I reject and I cancel. In the mighty name of Jesus, I put the heavenly stumbling block in between them and my children. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rema libra asho topre endeye me gibra anto logo brede shete lige braduska re nemro onto libra andale jege libra anto logo boshke teri haski. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
In Jesus' name we have prayed. <laughs> I was sharing with some sisters. I said there are some contracts you do not sign. Do you know there are some contracts you do not sign? Most especially for my sisters who are testing and tasting before you marry. You tasted this one. You took on part of his, uh, <laughs> of his generational curses. You mix and match. You take this one. You take part of his generational curses. It's not showing on your face because you're not getting pregnant. By the time you are married, you don't even know how many spirits you are carrying. You're going to pray tonight. And you're going to pray for yourself. And you're going to say, Lord, every relationship, every encounter that will, that will propel my children into foundational problems that are being carried by other people. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, I cancel such relationship. In the name of Jesus, and every foundational problem and curses that may be running within the families where my children will be married into. Father, I step in with your mercy tonight, and I begin to reverse them. In the mighty name of Jesus, before we get to the bridge, we cross it. And we decree, Lord God Almighty, every foundational problem, every generational curses that may be operating in the families where my children are married into. In the name of Jesus from tonight, I cancel such and I decree, Lord, the entrance of my children will bring a transformation within those families that you have destined for them, within those families you have prepared for them. In Jesus' name we have prayed. The Bible says that the righteous will flourish like a palm. Wow. The righteous will flourish. The righteous will flourish. A lot of us are not flourishing. A lot of women are getting married and they're not flourishing. You're going to pray tonight. And you're going to say, Lord, from the very second that my marriage vow is exchanged. This is for you single sisters. And the, sis the, the mothers in our midst. From the very second that my daughter and my son exchange their marital vows. Father, they will start to flourish. It will not be 16 years of sorrow before progress will come. They will start to flourish. Some man will say, before I married you, I was doing well. Some mother-in-law and father-in-law will say, before I married, before we married you, we were doing well. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, because the Bible says the righteous will flourish. Father, I will flourish. My daughter will flourish. In a marital home, she will flourish. My son will flourish in his marital home. In the name of Jesus, Father, the entrance of my children into the marital home will bring success. It will bring glory. It will bring joy. It will bring promotion. Hey, Father, Lord God Almighty, the greatness that my daughter's husband was not able to achieve before marriage, he will start to achieve. The greatness that my son could not achieve before he married, he will start to achieve. His wife will make progress. My daughter's husband will make progress in the name of Jesus all round about. In the mighty name of Jesus, man to In Jesus' name we have prayed. We're gonna pray against future and, and present mistakes. There are mistakes, uh, like I, I was sharing, I'm not sure if I shared this with you the last time the singles prayed. Jacob made a simple mistake of lack of recognition and it caused that woman, Rachel, problem for the rest of her married life. She did not enjoy that man. She just labored and struggled and argued and was competing all the way. You're going to pray.